In my laboratory, we are studying the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease, focusing on the roles of APOE4, the major genetic risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. Compared to the most common APOE3 carriers, people carrying APOE4 have increased risk of developing Alzheimer's disease and are likely to develop the disease at a younger age. Unfortunately, APOE4 is not rare. It affects one in four people in most populations around the world. For the past decade, we have been using a not-in-mouse model for our research, in which the endogenous mouse APOE gene is replaced by a human APOE4 or APOE3 gene. We have found that female knocking mice have age-dependent loss of helagabergic interneurons, a population of inhibitory cells in the dentate gyrus of the hippocampus. Importantly, the loss of the hella inhibitory interneurons is correlated strongly with the impairment of learning and memory. Building on the established cellular and behavioral phenotypes of the APOE4 knock-in mice, I wanted to know how the two were linked. How were cellular abnormalities driving memory or changing memory processes at a network level? We were particularly interested in a hippocampal network event called the hippocampal sharp wave ripple, or ripples as I'll call them. Ripples are the LFP signature of hippocampal replay. As an animal moves through its environment, play cells in the hippocampus fire as the animal passes through the cell's place field. During periods of immobility, these same neural ensembles are replayed, precisely reactivated in a time-compressed manner. Replay is thought to be critical for memory consolidation and potentially memory retrieval. Previous work has shown that the LFP signal for ripples can actually be decomposed into two simultaneously occurring oscillations, a high-frequency ripple oscillation and a much lower-frequency slow gamma component. The high-frequency ripple oscillation is thought to be predominantly driven by hippocampal place cells, so we can think of it as the content of the replay event. The slow gamma oscillation is thought to be involved in organizing that ensemble into an accurate recapitulation of prior experience. In collaboration with Dr. Lauren Frank's lab at UCSF, we analyzed ripple events and slow gamma activity in the APOE4 mice. We found that compared to APOE3 mice, APOE4 mice simply had fewer ripples. On top of that, in the remaining ripples, APOE4 mice showed significantly attenuated slow gamma activity. Both of these seemed likely to impair memory, less replay, or disorganized replay. So we wanted to see which of the two might truly be driving learning and memory deficits in the E4 mice. To address this question, we took advantage of a line of mice made in our lab in which the APOE4 gene is selectively removed from all GABAergic interneurons, the cell type lost in the hillis of APOE4 mice. I'll call these the DLX mice, based on the interneuron-specific Cree driver line that we used. The removal of APOE4 specifically from GABAergic interneurons is sufficient to prevent interneuron loss and learning and memory deficits. We reasoned that any network abnormalities underlying memory impairment should also be rescued in these mice. Strikingly, we found that the DLX mice showed reduced ripple abundance, just like the APOE4 mice. However, the slow gamma in the remaining ripples was much higher than what we'd seen in the APOE4 mice and similar to what we saw in the APOE3 mice. Since learning and memory are normal in the DLX mice, this told us that even though they had fewer ripple events, the intact slow gamma during ripples was sufficient to enable normal learning and memory. In addition, we studied young APOE4 mice prior to the onset of interneuron loss or behavioral impairment. These young mice already showed reduced ripple abundance, but had largely normal slow gamma during ripples. Together, our data indicated that a progressive slow gamma deficit during ripple underlines APOE4-induced learning and memory impairment. These findings highlight the importance of interneuron-enabled slow gamma in supporting good memory replay, suggesting that even when replay occurs less frequently, it is still effective as long as it is well organized by slow gamma. We plan to extend the current study to other Alzheimer's disease mouse models, and hopefully someday in humans in future. <laughs>